Welcome back to Universio. This time, the speed of light. Speed is a fundamental quantity for illustrating movements. It allows us to measure the distance an object travels, in a given amount of time. At the first glance, people might think speed is relative, because it could be measured to distinct values, when viewed from different perspectives. However, the theory of special relativity fundamentally changed our intuitive perceptions. There is one speed that never changes. The speed of light. It is a constant value in vacuum. No matter measured from what reference. Many of our explorations of modern physics are actually starting from light. As one type of electromagnetic waves, light has many wave properties. In 1842, Austrian physicist Christian Doppler came up with his famous Doppler effect experiment. Assume there is a water tank with a wave source producing circular water waves. Meanwhile, a person is standing stationarily in the water, observing waves moving toward him. The frequency of those waves observed by this person should be exactly the same as the source of the wave. But what happens when the person is moving toward the wave source? the frequency he feels should start to increase, which is known as the Doppler effect. Light also has Doppler effect. It changes the frequency of light due to the relative motion between the light source and the observer. When the light source moves away from the observer, the frequency received by the observer will decrease, which causes a shift towards the red end of the visible light spectrum, known as redshift. Similarly, if the light source moves toward the observer, then a blue shift will be observed. Another important property of waves is their propagation speed only depends on the nature of the medium that they are traveling through. A higher pitch will have a higher frequency but a smaller wavelength, and vice versa, which keeps the propagation speed unchanged, unless we switch the medium. If the wave source moves toward the observer, then the person will feel the frequency of the water wave is increasing. However, as long as the person stays stationary, the speed of the water wave he feels will remain constant. This is because the propagation speed of water waves has nothing to do with the wave source. But what happens if the person is moving together with the wave source at the same speed? Although the wave is still compressed, the frequency observed by the person is now equal to the wave source. This is because there is no relative motion anymore between the person and the wave source, thus the Doppler effect is gone. However, given the person now is moving relatively to the water, the wave speed felt by him should be decreasing, which follows the Galilean transformation. Given the medium is shared by all the objects traveling through, it must be treated as a global reference frame. That is to say, Doppler effect behind the frequency change is due to relative movements of different objects, while the Galilean transformation behind the wave speed change is actually caused by the absolute movements in the global reference frame. Let's go one step further. What happens if we put another wave source below the observer and let them move together at the same speed? From the person's perspective, the two waves coming from two different directions should have the same frequency, but different speed. This is the famous Michelson-Morley experiment, which replaces water waves with light. It assumes there is a medium called ether, permeating the whole universe, and acts as the carrier of light. Just like the moving observer in water, Earth is traveling in ether. As long as Earth keeps moving, Light from different directions must have different speeds, which should be detected by measuring the return speed of light in different directions at various different times. But surprisingly, the results of such experiments were all negative. The speed of light doesn't show any difference in any direction, which contradicts with Doppler effect of waves. There is one possible explanation. The ether is completely dragged by Earth and thus shares its motion. However, if ether is always moving together with Earth, then the global reference frame defined by ether is equivalent to the local reference frame defined by Earth. 
The Michelson-Morley experiment directly inspired the proposition of special relativity. Since then, the global reference frame of the whole universe is replaced by local reference frames of individual objects. The speed of light remains the same in each of these local reference frames. However, it is not unconditionally equal to c. In 1964, the American astrophysicist Erwin Shapiro designed a thought experiment. If we send radio signals to very far away plants and reflect it back via a satellite orbiting around them, then we can know if the speed of light is changed by calculating the round-trip travel time and travel distance. We shouldn't see any change under normal circumstances. However, when the planet, Earth and Sun are almost in the same straight line, then we will see the light is bent. And following the curved path, light is slowed down when it passes by the Sun. In 1976, the experiment was conducted by using the round-trip time of radio signals transmitted from Earth to the Viking spacecraft. In 2003, Cassini spacecraft did the same experiment. Their results agree with the predictions of general relativity, which indicates the curved light does get slowed down when viewed from Earth. The real meaning of the so-called constant speed of light is, if we put many observers along the path of the light, to each observer, the speed of light measured in their local reference frame is constantly equal to c and never changes. From the perspective of Earth, deflected light is slowed down, known as the Shapiro time delay. It is caused by space-time dilation from the perspective of an outside observer, such as the Earth. However, the speed of light is always measured equal to c locally by each observer. Let's go back to our initial thought experiment. If we draw time as the z-axis, then the water waves are forming a cone. The two edges of the cone are representing the propagation speed of the water waves. If we switch to the person's perspective, then his world line will become a vertical line, and the wave cone is now leaning toward the person, indicating the speed of the wave has been changed. If we replace the water wave with light, then this transformation is no longer applicable. Given the speed of light should be constant in the person's local reference frame, we need to leverage a new transformation. Lorentz transformation. This time, both edges of the light cone will remain unchanged, while the coordination of the light cone starts to change. The speed of light is constant, but it is only measured equal to c locally, where spacetime can be treated as completely flat in regions small enough. That is why Shapiro time delay can be observed on the cosmic scale. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, please subscribe to this channel.